Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up your LP16 for using backing tracks. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name's Taylor and I do all sorts of stuff guitar related on this channel, like demos and reviews and tips, tricks, and tutorials like this one. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of my uploads. All right, so I posted a video a while back on a Cymatic LP16, a very cool portable backtrack playing, backtrack playing, backtrack player, small little unit that plays backing tracks. And it was cool, I had a few people reach out to me and say that they would really benefit from like a detailed walkthrough. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna show you how to set up your tracks, how to export them, how to set up your MIDI. Uh, I'm using the Ampero, but the MIDI setup will be similar for anything you're sending MIDI to for the most part, I think. We're gonna do that today, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So if you missed that LP16 review, I'll link that here. So anyways, we're gonna cut over here and I will show you how to get this thing set up. All right, so I have my digital audio workstation loaded up here. I use Reaper. I don't think it really matters which DAW you use. That's just my preference. And what we're looking at is a session of the backing tracks. So on one track, I have the click. And on another track, I have the DI for the guitars. And on another track, I have bass. And then on the fourth track, I have the MIDI channel. The MIDI channel is what's gonna be sending signals to the Ampero, letting it know when to switch patches or to turn effects on and off. That's really all I use it for. You can do a lot of things with it. You can adjust parameters. You can really get super in depth, but I don't do all that. I just use it to turn my effects on and off and to switch between patches. Let me explain how I have the routing. I'm just going straight from my guitar into my Apollo Twin Duo and I'm just recording the dry signal. I am using a plugin to monitor myself while I'm playing guitar so I don't hear just, you know, dry guitar tone but I'm not actually recording that signal, I'm just recording the dry signal. When I play back these backing tracks out of the LP16, I'll be playing them into an actual amplifier, so that's why I'm doing it this way. If you wanted to play your backing tracks into a mixer or you know a powered speaker or something like that, you could totally just record the backing tracks with the actual amp tone already embedded on them. A lot of different possibilities here, but anyways. So I'm just gonna go through and Word of advice, get your click track mapped out ahead of time, so that way you know exactly where all the changes are in your song and you can play along to the click track. I'm recording these guitars just to a click track, you don't have to do it this way, but it just makes your life a lot easier if you do do it this way. If you don't play to a click track, I don't, good luck. <laughs> That's It's gonna be very awkward and hard to stay on time, I would imagine, but um, I'm sure it could probably be done. But make your life easier, use a click track. All right, so I'm just gonna track these guitars here. So now I've got all the guitars tracked. I have the bass on there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna consolidate my tracks a little bit here. If you look and you see how I have all this stuff chopped up here, um, I'm just gonna glue all this together just to make my life a little bit easier. And then just in front of this, I'm putting an empty item. I don't know if that's a Reaper specific thing or not, but uh, if you put an empty item in there and then you glue it together, it will actually add empty space in front of your track. And this way, when we export all of our tracks, they all start at the same starting point. That's really, really important. Because otherwise, it won't line up and it'll most likely just sound really bad. So now that all of that's lined up, I'm actually just gonna put my guitar away here because I don't really need it at the moment. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna get yourself a USB. And I don't think you need any special type of USB, just you know, any USB drive should do. It doesn't have to be 3.0 or anything like that. Go ahead and put the USB in your computer. My computer's down here, so I'm gonna have to go down here. So now what we're gonna do here, you're actually gonna need to export all of these tracks individually here. So, so what I usually do is I just set up a folder on my desktop to put all of the DI tracks in. Put a file on your desktop or somewhere where you can easily find it. Uh, right here, you can see that I have Sacrificer, DI's LP16, 
that's where I keep all of my DI tracks for the LP16. Uh, I'm gonna name all these, I'll show you why in a second. Yeah, let me show you what's going on here with the MIDI. So this is how you program the MIDI. You need to find um, where in the song you want the changes to happen. So the way I have my MIDI set up is I always default to my rhythm channel just as a fail safe when the song starts. In my control commands, I'm going to 00, zero bank select, right? And then I put in a note. It doesn't really matter too much where you set this. It just matters that you get the note on the grid and I'll show you why in a second. So at the very beginning of the song, I have this set up to do a patch select. And if you go over here to the event list, you can actually see the changes and you can actually type them out, which is much easier for me than trying to grab and like drag the note where I want it and everything. It's just get the note on time and then you can come in here and change it. I find that to be much easier. So you put the note where you want it in time, go to your events list here, and then it's gonna say bank program select. So you can see bank program select. Now in the Ampero manual, there is a MIDI section that shows you all of the different MIDI control commands and what they do with the Ampero. And I had a really difficult time getting the Ampero to select the user patches versus the default patches that come with it. And what I found out here is if you set the bank to one, uh, the MSB on the bank to one and the LSB to zero, then it will actually select the user patches versus selecting the stock Ampero patches. Okay, so uh, you have your bank set to one and zero, and then program number is going to be whatever number your patch is. So the first patch that's in the Ampero is gonna be program zero, the second one's gonna be program one, the third's gonna be program two, so on and so forth. So you just have to factor the zero in there. It's not gonna be patch one equals program number one. It's patch one equals program number zero. And then what you can actually do in here is you can actually press the send now button if you have your Ampero hooked up through the USB and set as your MIDI controller. That's important. You need to set the Ampero as your MIDI controller and hook it up through USB. You can actually press the send now button to make sure that the command works. So once you have the command set, then it will show you in the event log what's happening here. So, so it has a bank select. That's what's happening is it's selecting a different patch and then it's going uh, bank one zero and then program number zero, which is patch number one. Confused yet? Yeah, it's really confusing. So at this part in the song, you can see it actually has a bank selection there. So at that part in the song, I use a pitch shifter and the way I have my rhythm patch set up in the Ampero, I didn't have an extra effects block for the pitch shifter. So I actually had to create a separate patch with the pitch shifter in it. And that's what it's switching to in this part right here. And then you can see this control message right here. And that's actually just turning it off and going back to my rhythm channel. Now, what if you just wanna turn your effects on and off? So that's what control command 72 does on the Ampero. So let's say here, instead of switching a patch, I just wanted to turn the effects loop on and off. I could just program this in. And if it's turned all the way up, it will turn the effects on. And if it is all the way down, it will turn the effects off. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. I hope that that helps you program the MIDI. Um, if it doesn't, just experiment a little bit. You can always go to the events list and open these up and hit that send now button and just check and see if it's working. And I recommend doing that before you actually export it to the LP16, hook it all up. And then you end up finding out that your patch selections aren't working and you wonder why and you have to hook it back up to your computer. And What a mess. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to export these tracks. And here, you don't need to solo the track, I'm just doing it uh, just because, so I can keep track of what I'm actually exporting. So you're gonna select the track that you wanna export here, and you're gonna go to Render, and we're gonna choose that directory that we created earlier, where we have the DIs for the LPS 16. And then in Reaper, uh, you can actually use wildcards here and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the file name Sun, which is the name of the song, and I'm gonna use a wildcard that says track. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna add the track name on the end of the song name. So this track, when I export it, it will be Sun Click. And then when I do the guitar, it'll be Sun Guitar, so on and so forth. Okay, uh, you wanna make sure that this is a mono file and then set it to whatever sample rate your LP16 is set up at. Mine is at 48 kilohertz. And wave 24 bit, everything else looks good. Oh, go up here to source and make sure that you are bouncing a stem. Okay. Mono, bounds entire project, boom. Everything else looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and render that. 
Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the guitar. Make sure that you actually select the track. If you have this selected, but you have this soloed, you'll still export the track that's selected. So make sure that you're actually selecting the track you're trying to export. And we're just gonna do the same thing over again. Last, uh, we need to do the MIDI. So in Reaper, you go in here and you go to Export Project MIDI, and you need to actually name it here if it's not already named what you want it. Um, I'm gonna keep this what it is. And I don't know if it matters or not if you do a multi-track MIDI file or a single MIDI file. I'm doing a multi-track MIDI file, a type one. It just works, so that's why I've been doing it. And I clicked embed the project tempo and time signature changes. Again, this is just what worked for me, so that's what I've been doing. I haven't really experimented with not doing it. You know, I spent so much time doing this, and once I figured out what worked, I just didn't change anything, so that's why I have it set up this way. But anyways, once you have all that done, uh, you have the destination you want to put it into, press OK. And it's going to overwrite the one I have in there. And we're going to close that. And great, now we're done here. Now we're going to open up the U-Tool software. And once we have this open here, you can actually go into your home and multi-track songs. And we're going to do a new multi-track song. Okay, and then you're going to have to locate the file where you put all of your DI tracks or your backing tracks that you're going to play back. And here are mine, Sacrificer DI's LP16. So I'm gonna open that guy up. And here are all the files that are in that folder. And I want these three here. So on the left, it shows you all the files that are in the folder. And then on the right, it shows you the outputs of the LP16. And it's as simple as just dragging and dropping where you want the output to be played for that track. So I want the click on track one. Uh, I want the guitar on track two, and I want the bass on track three. Okay, then down here where it says MIDI file, you're going to need to open that up, find your MIDI file, and load that guy up there. All right, and make sure to name your song. Uh, sampling rate's good, resolution's good, everything's good. Save. Saving's important. Okay, and then you can close the editor once you have all this done. And now... You can see your song here. So this is my song. And then it's got the little MIDI icon on it so you know that the MIDI is attached to it as well. Now we're gonna go to export. So the target type is LP16 because that's what I'm using. And then the target over here on the right where the little USB thing is, you're gonna drop that down and you're gonna select your thumb drive and then it'll open it up and it'll tell you, hey, this target location is empty or it'll show what is on there if you have pre-existing songs on there and you're gonna to wanna to go here. You can select all of your multi-track songs or you can do one or, you know, select a selection of them, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select all of them here. And then I'm going to go export. And then while it's exporting, go ahead and hydrate. So that's it. That's how you create your backing tracks and get them on a USB to use with your LP16. So now you can take your thumb drive and you can put it into your LP16 and this will have all of your songs ready to go and you just select them and press play and it's good to go. All right, guys, that's it for me. I hope you found this demo useful. If you liked it, please hit the like button and consider subscribing and I'll see you next time. I don't, this, I don't know what this is. We're just gonna, yeah, okay. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully I covered everything you wanted to see in this video. If I missed something or you have more questions on something, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I will see you on another time. Bye. <laughs>